Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Tess and I make videos about stretching our money as far as I can and I'm really excited about today's video for two reasons. First of all, Kusori have asked me to have a look at their um, at new Turbo Blaze air fryer. I love it. I love the name Turbo Blaze. It's like an old, it's like a cheesy movie. Turbo Blaze, Return of the Air Fryer. <laughs> So that's been making me laugh. So this video is me just showing you that air fryer and, and I really put it through its paces this last week or so. So I've tried lots of different recipes, lots of different functions. It's a nine in one air fryer and has some functions that my old air fryer doesn't have. Um, so I've had a lot of fun making lots of different things, which I'm going to show you in, the, in this video. Um, but the other reason I'm really excited is because they've given me another air fryer to give away to one of my UK subscribers. I'm afraid I can only include people in the UK in the giveaway, but um, I'm really excited for one of you to have one of these air fryers as well. They're really good. Um, uh, you know I like an air fryer. Saves a lot of money on... Um, fuel bills because it's much cheaper to run than my big oven um, and I've discovered this one does a lot of things that um, also will save me a little bit of money so but I'll show you all of that as we go along um, so I'll give you some instructions at the end of the video on how to enter the giveaway but I would really ask you please not to mention the word giveaway uh, or win in the comments because it attracts um, bots and um, I don't want them to come along and tell you you've won in the comments click on this link and then um, take your information and cause you lots of problems online so um, you don't need to mention anything about the giveaway in the comments please I'll tell you how to enter at the end of the video I can't wait. So this air fryer is on sale at the moment um, with quite a good deal off. Um, so if you wanted to buy one, I'll put a link below. And if you just wanted to go and have a look at it online, you can do that using that link as well. So let's get on and I'll show you what I've done with it this week. So here it is in its box. I've had it a few days and because of the problems I've been having with the sound on my videos, um, I've been waiting for a new microphone to arrive and then actually I've ended up going back to an old phone that I used to use for videoing and I never had any problems with the sound on it at all, ever. So I'm filming it with quite an old phone but hopefully it'll be okay. So I haven't opened it is my point and I'm desperate to. <laughs> so here we are, this is what it is, it's a 6 litre air fryer. Now the last one that I reviewed was a four and a half litre one so this is a good bit bigger and it's a nine in one so let me show you what it can do so obviously it air fries it roasts grills it cooks from frozen you can preheat I'm not sure what you would use that for I'll have a look when I open the box and get the recipe book out. Um, it reheats, it dehydrates, which is one of the things that excites me. It bakes and it proves and it keeps warm. Now, I don't know if any of you watch the Great British Bake Off, but I've always been very excited by the fact that there are things called proving drawers. <laughs> So I'm really looking forward to proving some bread in this air fryer. In fact, I think that's probably what I'll do as soon as I've got it ready to use. I also plan to do some dehydrating in it, which will be really interesting for me. And, and I might do some baking. I've got a joint of meat that I plan to roast in it. All sorts of things. I've got loads of things that I'd like to do with this over the next week. So I'm going to have a play and I'm going to bring you along with me. So here we go. I've taken all the packaging off, you know, the polystyrene and what have you. Um, we've got a cover over the top, as you'd expect. 
plug and the drawer is taped in place we'll open that in a minute and have a look and then we've got the little plate that sits in the bottom and a book with I'm assuming a manual and possibly I think there's a recipe booklet that comes with it So there we are, there's the manual and a recipe book. So let's get these bits off the side, the little bits of tape holding the drawer in. Oh, they're well secured in place. One. Now all this will need a wash before I can use it to get rid of any factory whatnot. There we go, there's a little button so that you can't just hold on, let's push it back. <laughs> so you can't just pull it out, you have to press the button. It's a bit tricky to do with one hand. Right, so I've cleaned everything. I've washed the the pan and the crisper tray, crisper rack. And I've wiped everything on the outside over with a damp cloth and then dried it. Um, and now I'm going to do a test run just to make sure it's all working okay. And familiarise myself a bit with the controls. Okay. That light's shining on that a bit, isn't it? Let's move it forward a bit. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on. Now, it recommends in the manual that um, you just run it on this setting, 195 degrees centigrade, for 10 minutes. But I'm just going to have a play. So it's really easy to turn the temperature up and down and the time up and down. And then we've got all the presets. So we've got preheat, reheat, dry. That'll be dehydrate, I guess. Bake, proof, warm, air fry, roast, grill, and cook from frozen. Now it's preset to come on to air fry, and this is what I'm meant to do the initial test run with. So I'm just going to press play. And you can see it says it's cooking, and the fan speed is lit up all the way along so that's maximum five fan speed oh i can smell that new appliance smell you know when something's heating up for the first time <laughs> so i'll let it run its course and then um we'll have another play with it so just having a little play i've got a I've preheated some the pan, taken the crisper plate out, and I'm going to fry an egg in the air fryer. There we go. So I've preheated it. I'll just move it forward. So you can see. So I'll pause that. I think I will do it on air fry. See what happens. <laughs> it's saying 10 minutes, but I think I'll just do it for three and then I'll see how it's looking. So I've been playing around with this and um, videoing bits and um, this is the first thing I'm cooking in it <laughs> and it's for my breakfast. So I've buttered two slices of toast which are waiting for the egg. I've seen somebody else do this. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't have even occurred to me to fry an egg in the air fryer. Let's just see how it's doing. Oh, yeah. That's coming on. Did you see that? 
Yeah, look. I very definitely like the white of the egg cooked and the yolk runny. So we'll see if the air fryer manages that. My thinking is you could do pretty much a whole breakfast in here. So an egg, a sausage, just a rasher of bacon, if you have them, hash browns, some mushrooms. You could just put them all in. You'd have to space the timings out, wouldn't you? So um, the sausage first, then the bacon and mushrooms, and then egg last, because the egg will take the shortest amount of time, I imagine. But the benefit of doing this, as far as I'm concerned, is not using gas because it's more expensive to cook with gas than it is to cook with electricity. And um, this air fryer cooks faster than a lot of other air fryers as well, so hopefully that cuts down the electricity used as well. Oh, well that looks just how I like it. Let's get it out. I'll just push it back a minute. Get my plate of toasted butter. No, get my plate of buttered toast. <laughs> toasted butter. Mm. <laughs> okay, I've got my spatula for getting it out, but I mean, look at that. That looks pretty, pretty spot on for me. There you go. So I'm going to put some black pepper on that. And then use the knife I've used to butter the toast just to see how that egg is doing. That's perfect. The white is completely cooked and the yolk's runny. So now I know three minutes is the perfect amount of time for me <laughs> to fry an egg in the air fryer. How fantastic! <laughs> Right, so <clears throat> now I'm going to try proving some bread dough in the air fryer. So I've made a standard white bread dough. Um, for this I've used 500 grams of strong plain flour, you know, bread flour. And um, a tablespoon of sugar, a teaspoon and a half of active dried yeast and 350 millilitres of tepid water. Then I've kneaded it for 10 minutes. Now the manual says for proving, you to take the crisper tray out of the bottom and to cover the container that the bread's in with cling film quite tightly, because obviously it's gonna be in a warm environment and we don't want the, the surface of the bread dough to become dried out. Okay, let's have a look. Let's show you. So I'm going to go for proof. I don't want 60 minutes, I think 30, ooh, 30 will do. So it puts it on fan speed just one. You'll notice earlier it was five. 30 degrees. 30 minutes. So I'll leave it in there for that long. Let's set it going. <laughs> and we'll see what that looks like when it's been in there for 30 minutes. So let's have a look and see how that bread has done in the proving 
Ooh. Whoa. I'm really happy with that. Let's just push that back. I feel like that's risen really nicely in just half an hour. Wonderful. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to knock it back, knead it again, and then put it in my loaf tin. Put that back in for a second to prove. So I've kneaded it again, popped it back into the, well this time into the loaf tin that I want to use. Just going to cover it again with some cling film and let it prove for another 30 minutes. I'm using this tin because it fits perfectly. Let me show you. Into the air fryer. So again, I'm going to, I'll just turn it off and then I'll put the proof. Ooh, 30 minutes. Set it going. So after that second proof, I'm going to bake this bread in the air fryer. I'm a little bit nervous that it might rise up enough to hit that element. Um, but I've seen other people make bread in the air fryer and it's worked. So I'm going to give it a try. Genuinely though, I'm a bit nervous about it. it. It might not rise. It might burn on the top and not be cooked underneath. I don't know, but I'm going to give it a go. Okay, so the air fryer's just finished. Proving. Let's see how it looks this time. Ooh. Oh, I like that. That's done a brilliant job. So it just keeps it at 30 degrees, but look how nicely that's risen. <gasps> Marvellous. So I've just been checking um, the kind of temperatures that people bake bread at. <clears throat> Excuse the noise. In an air fryer. And um, they're all quite variable. I've seen somebody do it at 170 for 20 minutes. Somebody else do it at 200 for 25. <laughs> so I'm going to go um, on the timings that I usually use myself when I'm baking in the oven. Um, so I'm going to go 190. 190 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes. But if I might have a peep a bit earlier and if it looks as though it's, it needs to come out a bit sooner, I'll take it out sooner. But I'm super happy with how that's risen. So it says to leave the crisper tray out when you're doing this. And I think the crisper tray would make it far too high <laughs> if it's going to rise a little bit more. And it would touch, um, my worry is obviously, as I've just said, it would, might touch the element. So there we go. It's in. Somebody at the door. Right. So, uh, what did I just press? So, big. 190. 30 minutes. I'm going to give that a go. Uh, I will check in on it before that 30 minutes is up, maybe after 20 minutes and see how it does. Oh dear, <laughs> literally five or six minutes in, I could smell burning. Luckily I'd stayed in the kitchen to do some washing up. So, so I've taken it out. You can see how much it's risen. It's done amazingly, but it's going to have to go in the big oven, unfortunately, to finish it off. Because I know 
after five minutes that is not cooked inside. <laughs> so I'll pop it in the big oven and finish off. And I'm thinking of a different way of cooking bread in the air fryer so that it doesn't get as tall. So here we go, here's bread attempt number two. <laughs> I made the same dough, the same quantity, um, but I um, baked it in this shallow enamel dish, just with a bit of parchment in the bottom, grease proof paper. And um, it's much better <laughs> because it was allowed to rise sideways. It didn't rise up enough to hit the element. <laughs> It's a little dark on the top um, and I did turn it over for the last few minutes just to give the bottom some colour, it looked a bit pale. But that took 23 minutes on 200 degrees on bake. I'm going to let it completely cool and then I'll cut it open and see how it looks inside. So here we go, I'm just going to see how this loaf looks inside. It feels like a nice loaf, it's got a good dull thud. Um, so let's see. Cutting quite a thick doorstop because it's, although it's cooled, it's still fresh bread which is difficult to cut thinly, I find. So there we go. I'm rather pleased with that. So it took 23 minutes on a 200 degrees, I think. I put that on. It's been a while. I've forgotten. <laughs> Just making a cup of tea back here. So yeah, it took 23 minutes on 200 degrees and that's enough to make a nice crust and bake the bread nicely inside. I just did turn it over because the bottom looked quite pale and gave it another couple of minutes to brown the bottom a little bit. But it feels beautifully soft and that's the first bread I've made in a... In a um, that's the first bread I've made in an air fryer. The reason I particularly wanted to try baking is because I don't bake very often, but when I do, I have to do it in the big oven because I've no other means. So if I can bake in the air fryer, um, that would be fantastic. I do have a bread maker, so I do bake bread in the bread maker. For baking anything else, it would be really nice to use the air fryer. So what I'm going to try now is this fudgy brownies recipe. It comes in the Kasori recipe booklet that comes with the air fryer. So I'm hoping it's going to be spot on. They look fudgy. I've looked through the recipe and it looks a bit like a cakey method. But we'll see. Um, so what I need for the recipe is... 12 tablespoons of unsalted butter. I've only got salted, so I'm using this. And I've got more if this, this won't be enough, I don't think. Um, I've got more, um, but I'm going to omit some salt that's on the recipe because I'm using salted butter. I need granulated sugar, light brown sugar. So without my glasses on, where we are, I've got them. <laughs> it's, the print's quite small. Three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar, two thirds of a cup of light brown sugar, two eggs from our chickens, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, half a cup of all purpose flour, which is plain flour in the UK, half a cup of cocoa powder. And then it says half a teaspoon of kosher salt, but I'm missing that out because I'm using salted butter. And 170 grams of semi-sweet chocolate chunks. Well, I don't have semi-sweet chocolate chunks. And I only have 100 grams of this dark chocolate. So I'm going to use what I've got. 
and just chop this up into pieces. It will be delicious. I'll crack on with putting this together and I'm going to use this same tin that I used to make the bread in. It's just an enamel tin. I've put a bit of greaseproof paper in the bottom so it doesn't stick. I have got, um, it calls for a 20 by 20 metal baking pan, which I have got, but it's got a rim over the top, over the edge, which just stops it from fitting in the air fryer. If it just was straight up and down like a folded bread loaf tin, it would be fine, but it doesn't quite fit in. So, but this one does. So I'm going to use this and make a round brownie. Okay, so it's just pinged off. Let's have a look and see how it is. Cool. Well, that looks good. It looks very squishy in the middle. Um, I've followed the recipe exactly. So I'm going to continue to do that. Certainly has a bit of colour on top. Um, and it does say it's fudgy, so perhaps as it cools and that firms up, it'll go from soft to fudgy. I don't know if you can see. Can you see it's quite move, moving around quite a bit. So I'll let that cool and then we'll cut into it. So we've had a bit of a disaster with this. And the only reason I can think of is because I've done this in a 20 centimetre diameter tin instead of a 20 by 20 tin. So it will be, there's a little bit less space, so it'll be a bit thicker. Let me show you the plate that I initially turned it out onto. I'd put it into soak in, the, in some washing up water. But you can see I turned the brownie out onto it and it was absolutely liquid. <laughs> So I've poured it back into here, literally, and cooked it again for another 20 minutes and it's still really quite runny. It's cooled now for 10 minutes, so let me just show you. 
so I've just used this to get get it out but I can't get it out all in one piece even though it's been cooling and it's really squishy now it might be that you like your brownie like that it's not going to taste bad because the ingredients are good but I do think a bowl of this with some cream on would be really good because it is I think it's cooked enough now so yeah scoop some into a bowl treat it like like a pudding put some cream on boom so in here I have about three quarters of a smallish butternut squash which I've de-seeded I've left the skins on and cut into wedges and I've coated the butternut squash in olive oil um, about a teaspoon big heap teaspoon of dried thyme about a tablespoon of olive oil some about a teaspoon of salt teaspoon of black pepper and then I've got some grated parmesan there that I'll put on afterwards but I have put a little bit of it on now right so I'm just about to put some pork in the air fryer so I've got a British pork loin crackling joint which was £8.59 and um, 1.145 kilos says it takes one hour and 45 minutes we'll see if it, we can do it a bit quicker in the air fryer and get some good crackling because we all love a good bit of crackling so I've taken this out of the packaging let it get to room temperature pretty much and I've dried it and then salted it and put olive oil on it which is what you can see on the surface there and I'm going to pop it in the air fryer at 160 for an hour and 10 minutes and then see where we're at so before I put it in, put it on I'm going to preheat the air fryer so I'm going to preheat it to 180 and the instructions say to take out the crisper plate so I'm going to put this directly into the air fryer pan and cook it for an hour and ten minutes on roast at 180 degrees centigrade okay so it's all preheated now and I'm going to put the pork joint into the bottom of the pan Oh, you can hear it sizzle a bit when it goes in. That's nice. Okay. So now I'm going to set it to roast at 180. Oh, there we go. For an hour and 10 minutes. Oh, it'll only let me do an hour. Okay, well, I'll do it for an hour and then I'll test it and let you know how it is. Here we go. So, um, the pork's in the air fryer. We're going to have pork with these um, butternut squash, thyme, and parmesan chips, really. Um, so I'll be, re I'll be reheating these in the air fryer when it's time. So I'm going to do it in this dish. And so I'm currently going to just put some parmesan over them now. So that when I reheat them, that melts over them. But I won't be doing that for a while because the um, pork's going to take a, a good hour, maybe an hour and a half. Um, let's see how it goes. But I just wanted to show you what I'm doing with those and that I'll reheat them when just before we need to eat them. I'm also going to just um, steam some broccoli. So we'll have pork with crackling, butternut squash and broccoli. The pork's been going about 40 minutes. I'm just going to take it out and see how it's looking. Oh, that looks really good. Okay. I've moved the air fryer off the hob because I need to cook some broccoli in that pan. 
Uh, but I'm just going to see how the internal temperature of the pork's doing. Oops. <coughs> Turn it over so I can get a good place to get that in there. Can you see that? Uh, it's a long way off yet, so 28 degrees. I think I might put it back in this way round for a little bit. Don't want the pork crackling to end up too done. So I can do it upside down for the rest of that, 21 minutes. And then I think I'll need to put it on for a bit longer. That was only an hour. On the packet for the pork, it said to cook for an hour and 45. It may be that I need to do it that long. Um, I'm playing it by ear. I'm hoping it'll be a little bit shorter, because even though this is this takes less power than the big oven by a long way, I'd also um, like it to be a bit quicker if possible as well. Right, so that first hour is up. I've got my thermometer in here and it's at 56 so we want to be minimum of 63 degrees so we're almost there but um Lonards you're the best and y'all are like girl we got you so thank you the replay crew is going to be like oh all the nonsense got edited out yes just showing you while I'm cooking I'm watching Emily D Baker because she's fantastic and if you don't know her channel go check it out she's got millions of Many, many, many subscribers. Here we go. Well, that's an hour and 10 minutes. So I'm just going to check the internal temperature. And we'll see how we're doing. Oh, it's just gone off. I thought I was recording. I don't know what I've got and what I haven't, but I've just taken the crackling off the meat, put the meat aside to um, rest, removed the butcher's twine from the joint, and I have removed this fat from the underside of the crackling. The crackling is beautiful, listen to this. It's crunchy. Um, I've got some broccoli steaming to go with it. I've made some gravy. I just need to reheat these in the air fryer with the cheese on. Once the broccoli's done, we're good to go. Um, so to reheat these, I'm going to just pour all of the meat fat out of the air fryer into a dish so I can use it for making roast potatoes at some point. And then I'll be able to put this in to um, reheat. So here we are. Here's um, roast pork with crackling. Uh, butternut squash with thyme and pars with thyme and parmesan, and some boiled broccoli.
So there we are. I had so much fun. A few um, user errors in there, <laughs> but I'm genuinely really impressed with it. Um, as air fryers go, it's very um, varied in its functions and um, I will get a lot of use out of it. Um, so to enter the giveaway, um, what I would like you to do is email me. So down in the description box below this video there will be um, a little bit of writing and then it says more and if you click on the more it opens up more writing in there you'll find an email address that you can contact me on what I'm going to do is um, number each of the emails that come through wanting to be entered into the draw and then I think I'll do the draw on Christmas Eve. That would be fun, wouldn't it? What a nice way to start Christmas. Um, and I'll draw a number and whichever email has that number will win. I'll pass your, if you pass me your address, I'll pass that on to Kasori and they'll post it straight out to you. So just to be clear, there's an email address below. Email me to say that you want to be part of the draw. I'll enter you in the draw, give your email a number, draw a number on Christmas Eve, and then I'll contact you to get your address to give um, to Kasori, and they'll post it out to you. Thanks very much for watching. If you've got any questions, ask me below. Good luck to you all, those of you in the UK. I am again sorry that it can't be an international giveaway. That's just um, what Kasori had said. Um, see you all again really soon. Bye for now.